and the two were evaluated side by side. Pilots said that the LA-15 was better from their point of view, but the logistic support from the MiG Bureau for their product was better. After a production run of about 500 aircraft, the LA-15 was discontinued. The MiG-15 was left uncontested as the Soviet Union's frontline jet fighter. We will return in a moment to Weekday Wings on the Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel. This is the North American XP-86. Although no one knew it at the time, the production version, the F-86 Sabre, would become the MiG-15's great rival for air supremacy. It was roughly contemporary with the MiG-15 in development. The prototype was ready to fly at the beginning of October 1947, almost two months before the flight of the MiG-15 prototype. It took off from the lake bed at Muroc on October the 1st. It was similar to the MiG-15 in layout, with the engine installed in the fuselage and wings swept at an angle of 35 degrees. The MiG-15's wings were swept at 36 degrees. The main difference between the two was weight. The more complex F-86 had a maximum takeoff weight of just over 20,000 pounds. A loaded MiG-15 beast weighed about 13,000. From the beginning, the F-86 was an impressive aircraft. It was fast, and before the end of 1947, exceeded the speed of sound in a dive. Pilot vision was excellent, and so was the aircraft's handling. But this was a test program. The Sabre's qualities were soon to be tried in combat. In June 1950, North Korean troops invaded South Korea and America entered a war that quickly escalated into a major conflict. American B-29 pilots bombing the North were shocked to find themselves being attacked and their numbers decimated by cannon fire from stubby, swept-wing jet fighters bearing North Korean colors. The F-86 was called to Korea to counter the success of the MiGs, and one of the classic air battles of all time began. By then, the F-86 had been in service for over a year. Like the MiG-15, it had been through a number of modifications and improvements as a result of experience with early models. By the time it reached Korea, the E model had been introduced. It had underwing racks that could carry two 1,000-pound bombs, drop fuel tanks, or rockets. It had been fitted with a new General Electric engine producing 5,200 pounds of thrust. It also had a one-piece flying tail, which gave more control power, especially at transonic speeds. The US philosophy on arming fighters differed from that of the Soviet Union. In World War II and at the period of the Korean War, American fighters tended to be armed with six or eight 12.7 millimeter machine guns. The machine guns were easy to aim because tracer ammunition allowed the pilot to adjust to the target, but their firepower was limited and the pilot needed time on the target to register enough hits to bring the enemy down. The Soviets, on the other hand, preferred two or three higher caliber cannon. Aiming was more difficult, 
But one 37mm shell was capable of destroying an F-86. The first encounter between American jet aircraft and MiG-15s had already occurred. On November the 8th, 1950, an F-80C shot down a Chinese MiG-15. It was an unusual victory. MiGs could usually escape from F-80s because they could climb much faster, but the American pilot was able to catch one in a dive. The F-86 was a major advance on the F-80. Whether or not it was better than the MiG was still to be discovered. beast was supplied in quantity to the North Korean Air Force and flown by North Korean and Chinese pilots. It has only recently been admitted though that the Soviet Union was also directly involved in the war. An air division of elite Soviet pilots commanded by the top scoring ace of World War II, Ivan Khajedub, was sent to Korea to gain combat experience and fought on the North Korean side. authorities discussing the comparison between the performance of the MiG and the Sabre in Korea claim kill ratios of about 8 to 1 in favor of the F-86. This is an overall figure covering Chinese, North Korean and Soviet pilots. But the Soviet perspective is a little different. Soviet authorities make the point that Chinese and North Korean pilots flying the MiG-15 had two major problems. The first was that they were not well enough physically conditioned to take advantage of the maneuverability and high G-loads of the MiGs in combat. And the second was that the Chinese language did not adapt well to combat commands. And in the early 50s, soon after the establishment of the People's Republic of China, there were no standard combat procedures translated into Chinese. The small number of elite Soviet pilots flying for North Korea had their own language problem. They were not allowed to communicate in combat in Russian, so their presence in the war would not be detected. When the performance of the Soviet pilot against the American F-86 is considered in isolation, Russian authorities claim a two-to-one kill ratio in favor of the MiGs. military was extremely anxious to acquire an example of the MiG to examine at close quarters. The British Royal Navy recovered the wreckage of an early model 
from 20 feet of water off the Korean coast. It was shipped to Buffalo, New York, and intensified.